Hello and welcome to this instructional video on the basics of using Google Maps. Now in this video we're going to just basically go through very quickly, see where the controls are, see the basic operation, and in future videos we'll go into more detail. So to get to Google Maps you can type in maps.google.com and you'll be directed redirected to a map or if you're in any Google property you can click on the waffle and you should find maps in there and it should take you um, right to where you want to go to use the program. Over on the left you have the main search tools. Within the search tools you have this menu with um, more options for searching and more options for doing things. We'll look at that in future videos. There's a lot in there. Um, this, but this is your basic search bar. Over in the right corner you have the option of signing in. Now signing in to maps can be uh, beneficial because you can save things in a certain way that you can't if you're not signed in. So you have some additional options if you sign in. If you look down at the lower right corner, you'll see some tools down here that we'll talk about. The first is your location. If you turn on your location, you're sh sharing uh, that with through the browser. You can also do it through an app. There's a separate app for Google Maps, which can be very, very useful on your phone. But if you allow it to know your location, especially on a mobile app, it's going to know where you are all the time. So even if you're not using Maps, it's collecting that information. And you can actually go in and see it yourself, but if you were to carry that phone around in your pocket for a week and never visit Maps, you can go back and you can see every location you were in over the course of that week. So that's a consideration for you to think about. There's plus and minus signs here, but to zoom in and out, I generally prefer just to use the... Um, the wheel on the mouse if that's available to you. Okay, but you can use this if you prefer. To reposition the image, you can click and drag to get it exactly where you want. Down in the lower corner, if you click on here, it's going to show you images that have been uploaded to Google that are in this map area. So if I mouse over them, you can see the black line points to exactly where the image was taken. Okay, if I click on one of those images, it brings me to the picture. I can then use this control to page through those other images if I want. And you can see some of them are images, and some of them are actually these 360 degree images that you can um, move around in. Okay, that's called Street View, and we'll look at that in more detail later. Okay, you can continue to page through here. You can always call back your image bar down at the bottom. Uh, note that when you're on a particular image, there may be several links. This might be to space that this particular person has where they're uploading um, images or maps. And then this would be linked to the actual location. So the options here vary. Um, this is Maps is very context sensitive. It depends where you are and what you have selected as to what your options are and what's available, what information is available for that. Okay, uh, the arrow here would return you to your basic map and you can, you know, you can come in and out of it at that way. If I close this down, you'll notice the little man here and this allows you to another way to get into the street view images. So if I click that now, notice my map changed and certain things are outlined in blue. And those areas are where Street View is available. So if I were to click here, okay, got it. It'll bring you down to this Street View. And you notice that a lot of it, a lot of these images are set up so you can actually move along the image. So this is an activity you could do with students if you'd like. kind of kind of interesting and does give you context of what the surrounding areas look like. I find this particularly useful if I'm not in my local area but I go to some place that my students might not be as familiar with. Again my um, street view is on so I can get in there and I can see how the streets of Rome uh, and the areas of, of this area of Rome might look a little different than um, some of the areas closer to me. Okay.
Okay, the uh, a lot of those Street View images, are, just for your information, are collected by a car. If you've ever seen it, you, you may have run across it. It's got Google on the side and up on top. It's got a big piece of equipment, and it's just taking these these 360 images as, as it drives. So I ran into it um, a little while ago. I just happened to be at a stop sign, and I saw it go by. So I don't know if it was recording or not, and if at some point when these images are uploaded and synced, then my car will be... Uh, uh, you know, will be available to be seen on Google Maps. Okay, um, when you want to come out of that, you can simply click on it again and you'll come back to your normal map. The In the lower left is an icon that allows you to switch from a representative view of maps to uh, a view that is created with uh, satellite imagery that Google has, has spliced together. And you can see that you can zoom in pretty far you can come in quite far into into the area and this is an overhead view but now my options over here have changed and I can switch that to 3D if I want which is a nice feature I can also hold down my control key and drag to change the angle of what I'm looking at I can hold that control key and um, drag horizontally to spin the image or vertically to change the angle so again, something worth exploring. Um, when you're done, you can just go back to 2D. You can also click on this icon to rotate the view. And by default, it's going to bring it up to a northerly orientation. Okay, so kind of cool tools there. If I don't want these images, I click on that map icon again, and I'm back in normal maps where I can scroll in or out, etc. Okay. Now, let's revisit where we started this bar over here on the left. What you'll notice is, is, depending on where you are on the map, it depends what information is shown. So when I'm back pretty far, it's not going to show me the street names. It's going to show me what it considers the appropriate features for this view of the map. Um, if I zoom in, I get more details. I start to get road names. Um, I start to get more local restaurant here's a furniture store that if I was back a little further I wouldn't see but if I come in I can see there's a music school a tailor a furniture store in this area um, a place to a place to get lodging etc so those things appear uh, depending on on what view you are in a the map they're contact sense context sensitive and if you do click on one of them well let's just actually just mouse over one for a second and you can see that available information is, is shown here. So it gives you the name of the uh, location. This is Tennis Club. It's showing you a summary of the reviews. So this gets 3.9 stars, um, which seems pretty good. And it's telling you that there were 59 reviews. If I were to mouse over different locations, let's see if I can find one. I may, uh, there you go. Since this one is a place where you can stay, it's showing you a price. So that's $32. Wow. Um, B and B. Okay. And then here is a gallery. It's got one review. It all depends on, on where you are and what you mouse over as to what information you get. But in this view, it's all summary. If I actually click on it, that information loads in the left pane over here and I get a lot more information. So let's take a brief look at the types of things you might find. Although again, they're different depending on the location. Okay, so first of all, you could save this map. If you were logged in, you could save this particular map for some reason. You could share it with someone else. I can click the nearby function here, and then I can find hotels, restaurants, bars, and pubs nearby. Um, so let's just say that I'm going to go to restaurants, and that adjusts my search and shows me, I guess there's only a couple, couple nearby. And I can further adjust that and say I only want uh, restaurants that have four stars or better. And it's, yeah, there, there's two there. Now, that's going to bring you to, you could, of course, click on them here, or you could click on them over here, and again, that changes the focus. Now, I'm looking at information about that particular restaurant. So, it's telling me that it's rated 4.3. And, uh, oh, where is that one? There it is. Okay, so, um, no, where is it? Loretta, it's the one down here. I'm sorry, it's got the big pin next to it. it. Should be easy to find. So you can see 4.3, 4.3, 4.3, 4.3, 4.3, 4.3, 4.3, 4.3, 4.3, 4.3, 4.3, 4.3, 
270 reviews. The information is the same in both places. Um, it's giving you a little description of it. It's giving you the address so you can get to it, the website, the phone number. It's telling you that it's currently, it'll be closing soon, but then it also gives you the hours during the week and the opportunity to suggest an edit if you think that uh, this information is incorrect. It's showing you the busier times, so it looks like this is open for lunch, closes, and then opens later in the evening for dinner. You've got these big spots here where there's no activity at all, but this can be very useful in a lot of, for a lot of um, different venues as far as you knowing maybe when a good time to visit is. Okay, um, there's associated images, there's more details about the ratings here, and down at the bottom it's going to show you that people who searched for this also searched for these things. So, um, let me just see. Here, there's a Colosseum in Rome. So great, that's a tourist attraction. When I come down, it says they also search for the Pantheon, Circus Maximus, etc., etc. So um, useful information. Again, I've said it before, here you can even find tickets. So because this is something you can buy tickets for, that option is available to you. Okay, um, that's a very quick tour of the types of things you can do in Google, uh, Google Maps. Um, note that we searched for a place like the Colosseum, we can search for a specific address. So if instead I put uh, 12 Main Street in East Hartford, Connecticut, so you can get a very specific location here, or I can just search for uh, Albany, New York. Lots of different options in searching. Uh, just think if you don't have all the details that a natural language search works for many, many things. Um, uh, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. So it really has incorporated um, Google search features to a great extent to make, make this a very, very easy tool to use.